Welcome to Living Life. You know, in my many years of ministry, um, I've always I've always felt this uh, separation sometimes between the congregation and the pastors. Sometimes congregations will say, "Oh, that's the pastor's job," or uh, "The pastors do that." But as we look at this passage uh, today. Paul will tell us that we all have the same job, and that is to present the gospel. We all have the same job from the as standpoint of being ministers. And a lot of times as uh, congregants and lay people, we don't think of ourselves as ministers. But hopefully after this passage, we'll begin to see ourselves and understand what God's expectations are for us as ministers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Let's take a look at the passage and see uh, what it says. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses 11 through 21. Since then, we know what it is to fear the Lord. We try to persuade men. What we are is plain to God, and I hope it is also plain to your conscience. We are not trying to commend ourselves to you again, but are giving you an opportunity to take pride in us, so that you can answer those who take pride in what is seen, rather than in what is in the heart. If we are out of our mind, it is for the sake of God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For Christ's love compels us, because we are convinced that one died for all, and therefore all died. And he died for all that those who live should no longer live for themselves, but for him who died for them and was raised again. So from now on we regard no one from a worldly point of view. Though we once regarded Christ in this way, we do so no longer. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has gone, the new has come. All this is from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting men's sins against them. And he has committed to us the message of reconciliation. We are therefore Christ's ambassadors, as though God were making his appeal through us. We implore you on Christ's behalf, be reconciled to God. God made him who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Welcome back to Living Life. As we learned in the earlier passage, there's no segregation with respect to the role of lay people and pastors. We all have the role of presenting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, sometimes that will come just by presenting our testimony about how we came to know the Lord and how God blessed our lives. Uh, but in that, when we present the gospel of Jesus Christ, we're all discharging our ministry. Now, in this passage, Paul starts out and he says that he understands the fear of the Lord. He understands the, which is really the awe and the reverence of God. And that, that motivates him to try to persuade everybody unto conversion, to be converted unto Jesus Christ. But then he goes a little further and says what really motivates him that is that the love of Christ is the love of Christ, he says, that compels me to do what I do. It's the love of Christ that compels me to uh, to go and travel the world to tell as many people about Jesus Christ as I can. And sometimes when I do that, I even appear foolish and um, not praising myself, but um, this is the way I come off because I'm so excited. This is what Paul would tell us, and he tells us that in Scripture, and he's passionate about presenting the gospel. But he's also passionate about uh, lay people about um, the, who are not pastors presenting the gospel as well. So as we look at this passage, Paul says uh, we need to begin to see that Christ died for everyone, and because he died for everyone, it's our role, it's our responsibility to now live for Christ and present the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, to as many people as possible in the short time that we're here on planet Earth. Uh, Paul says also, he says, 
If you looked at Jesus in a worldly, from a worldly point of view, don't look at Jesus that way any longer. Look at him from a spiritual point of view. Change your perspective and see Jesus for who he is. Jesus came here that the world would be removed and that the world would be redeemed from sin. And Jesus, so from the standpoint of Jesus' purpose here, it was to save this world from sin so that they would not suffer eternal death and eternal separation from God. So he also tells us if someone actually comes to Jesus Christ and admits that they're a sinner and receives Jesus Christ by faith in this, in this gospel, he says that that person will become a new creation in Christ Jesus. He says the old will go and the new has come. If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. That means anybody. So anyone in this entire world is a candidate for salvation. Paul was passionate and he wants us to be passionate. Paul also says there's two things that God has given us when we come to know him. He's given us the ministry of reconciliation, and he's also reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ. The ministry of reconciliation, and he has reconciled us through Jesus Christ. Now, he's also done something else. He's also committed to us the message of reconciliation. So we, we are ministers of reconciliation. We have been reconciled to God through Jesus Christ, and we have been given the message of reconciliation for the world. What is that message? Be reconciled to God before it's too late. So we are asking, Paul uses the expression of ambassadors. We are like ambassadors making an appeal to the world to be reconciled to God. What is an, who is an ambassador? What is an ambassador? An ambassador is someone who is presented and lives in another country who presents the country that they're from in the best light possible. We, are, we live in this world, but we are not of this world. Our home is in heaven. The Bible tells us in Philippians 3.20 that our citizenship is in heaven. So we are presenting ourselves to this world. We are presenting our King and our Lord to this world. And we are presenting his offer of salvation to this world as ambassadors and presenting the kingdom of God in the best and most favorable light possible. Now, Interesting, very, very interesting. The final verse that Paul talks about here is in verse 21. And this is the verse that ties everything together. And essentially it says, God made him who knew no sin to be sin for us so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. Essentially what happened is that there was a trade made. And the trade was Jesus got our sin and we received his righteousness. Jesus took the punishment. He took the pain that was supposed to be ours. And he died on the cross and he buried those sins. And he rose again on the third day for us. God made him who knew no sin, to be sin for us so that in Jesus Christ we would become the righteousness of God. Have you been reconciled to God? Have you heard the word of truth about your standing with God? Apart from Jesus Christ, you are separated from him. And if you die in that condition, you will be separated from God for all eternity. But Jesus Christ offers a way for you to be reconciled to God. I implore you today, I urge you to be reconciled to God today 
through Jesus Christ. Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you for this time. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for not only the truth of your word, but the power of your word. Uh, you tell us that your word is powerful and it's active. And you also tell us uh, that the word uh, is, can bring salvation to whoever believes. So I pray right now for the listeners and those watching that they will hear your words and they will seek your salvation. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. This program is produced by the listeners of the audience.